Well, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Um, this is not a talk about the uh, techniques of uh, doing a valve sparing operation in a bicuspid valve, but mainly to address the issue as to whether we should all be going home and start doing these uh, operations. Aneurysm is still one of the biggest killer. And the surgery for, the, for aortic aneurysm started about 60 years ago. And as you can see, the mortality rates for aortic aneurysm surgery are extremely high. And thanks to these pioneers uh, for persevering uh, with, the, uh, with the surgery, we now have very good results uh, for aortic root surgery with mortality of, in most places, less than 1% in super specialized center, uh, which is close to mortality for uh, elective uh, coronary artery bypass surgery. Aortic root surgery was first uh, proposed by um, Hugh Bentel from Hammersmith Hospital, and the Bentel operation has now become like, like a gold standard uh, in the treatment of uh, aortic uh, root aneurysm. You can replace aortic root with either a mechanical valve or a tissue valve conduit. And as a surgeon, we're often faced uh, with a situation like this when you open up the chest and see a big aneurysm. But once you uh, resected the aneurysm, you can see that the aortic valve leaflets are entirely normal. And it would be such a shame to actually uh, replace this valve. I mean, although this, in this case, it's a tricuspid uh, uh, normal looking aortic valve. So valve sparing operation for the tricuspid aortic valve is fairly well established. And uh, if you look at Dr. Tyron David's uh, series as it has been pre uh, presented in the last two uh, presentation, you see that he has got probably one of the biggest series and one of the longest follow-up of about 20 years, and by now it will be more than 20 years. And you can see that the uh, survival is very good. Uh, at 20 years, it's still uh, 60, 69, 70%. Similarly, um, the freedom from reoperation is also excellent at 20 years at 94%. So it's fairly well established that for a tricuspid aortic valve, we should try and spare the aortic valve if we can as an alternative to the bento uh, root replacement. And the advantages of valve sparing operations are, are fairly obvious. I mean, you get a better hemodynamics compared to a rigid prosthetic valve. You get lower risk of thromboembolic events and anticoagulation-related complications, and also the risk of uh, endocarditis. So what about valve sparing um, operation for the bicuspid aortic valve? Well, first of all, these are a few uh, facts on the bicuspid aortic valve. It was first described by uh, Sir Oshler. It affects about 1% to 2% of the population, and it affects male more than females. Only about 24% of the bicuspid valve are truly bicuspid, and of all of that, 30% are of, un of leaflet are of unequal size. About 76% of the patient has got the fused leaflet, the rafe. It may be complete, it may be partial, and the commonest is between the right and the left, left uh, cusp. Bicuspid aortic valve like the tricuspid aortic valve, is also susceptible to degeneration, sclerosis, and calcification, and probably even more so. If you think about it, um, the, the incidence of uh, bicuspid aortic valve is only 1% to 2%, but as a cardiac surgeon, when we operate on patients for aortic stenosis, probably about, we'll see about 30% 30, 30 of our patient has got a bicuspid aortic valve. So they, I think they are more susceptible to degeneration and, and, and calcification. To do a valve sparing on tricuspid valve, after hearing the last two presentations, I, would, I wouldn't call it as easy anymore. I mean, but with a tricuspid aortic valve, you have three equal sin relatively equal sinuses and leaflet, and you are also less likely to require to do leaflet repairs. However, it's, it's not so uh, with the uh, bicuspid aortic valve sparing operation. It is definitely, from my own experience, technically a lot more challenging than the tricuspid aortic valve. The problem is that the anatomy of the leaflet and the sinuses are not uniform, and you're also likely, very much likely, to have to repair the aortic leaflet and to support the annulus uh, as compared to the uh, tricuspid aortic valve. And if you look at the sever classification of bicuspid aortic valve, 
you see that even though they've got two, um, two lift, true bicuspid valve, the orientation of the valve are different, are variable. And in the case of a uh, patient, uh, patient with a uh, fused leaflet between uh, uh, a raffe, and again, the orientation is different. In a small proportion of patients, you might even have two raffes. So the anatomy is very different. So when you want to do a valve sparing operation on this group of patients, you go to, to uh, repair the aortic valve, you can look at orientation. The sinuses are often unequal, so it's much more difficult, much, much more technically more challenging. If you, uh, if you look at this paper from uh, Bavaria, from the Univer Pittsburgh University, you see that in his experience of bicuspid aortic valve versus the tricuspid valve, 100% of his patients needed leaflet repair, and only 7% in the tricuspid group required leaflet repair. Now, leaf, leaflet repair are difficult. They are not easy because the aortic leaflets are often very thin, um, and procedures that you may have to do for the leaflet includes shortening of the free margin. You may have to resect the raffe with primary repair, or if the uh, defect is too big, then you may have to replace with a patch, both a pericardial patch. And if you look the, at the uh, data that was presented by uh, Professor Okita from, uh, from Japan, uh, looking at his experience of uh, valve sparing operation, although he get a very good uh, freedom from uh, severe regurgitation at 10 years of about 80%, he then analyzes the subgroup of patients that has failed over the years. And he finds that the majority of the cause of early failures are due to technical reason at due to, uh, doing mitral, uh, doing uh, leaflet repairs. As you can see, most of these patients have repairs and these are all technical reasons, that, that's why it failed. He also looked at late failures. Again, with late failure group, he also find that a lot of these patients had cusp repair and the failure is due to, for, for technical reason, torn cusp, uh, technical, technical, again, torn cusp. So repair of the, of the uh, aortic valve leaflet are quite challenging and can be quite difficult. You cannot do a literature search by, about bicuspid aortic valve repair without being bombarded by a lot of publication from Dr. Schaefer, Professor Schaefer here. I mean, he's, he has got a vast amount of experience, and I feel like I'm actually doing his presentation for him now. This is his uh, uh, paper where he presented his experience with 153 patients for um, bicuspid aortic valve repair. And you can see that, again, in the majority of his cases, he needs to do leaflet repair and with a mean follow-up of 4.9 years and with an excellent operative mortality of uh, less than 1%. And he has got good um, um, freedom from reoperation uh, after patient with a root uh, bicuspid aortic valve repair and also a very good um, uh, freedom from all valve-related complications of 91% uh, at five years and at 10 years. So the results are excellent if, you, if, it is the, if the operation is done uh, properly. This is a paper that he published, which I think who, anybody who wanted to um, start doing bicuspid aortic valve repair should read because it's a very informative paper and it gives you all the risk factors for failures that you should avoid if you want to embark upon this kind of uh, challenging operation. He finds that the commissural orientation of bicuspid valve is very important. In patients that has got the orientation of less than 160 degrees, the, free, the, um, the freedom from reoperation is a lot worse, significantly worse than a patient who has got a commissural orientation of greater than 160 degrees. So that's something to bear in mind. Also, the aorto-ventricular uh, junction diameter is also very important. And if you subdivide the group with a diameter of less than 29 millimeters compared to the group that has got greater than 29 millimeters, this group does not do as well uh, on follow-up. And the difference is very significant. And also, the use of pericardium, autologous pericardium, is not ideal either because the failure rate is much, much higher than patient that does not require pericardial um, replacement. The, and also, the effective height uh, of the, of the uh, valve leaflet at the end of the operation is also quite a, a predictive factor 
for success or failure later on. And he has got, his results are very good. Mortality is less than 1%, survival, survival at tenure of 92%, and the freedom from valve replacement at five years is 95%, and at 10 years is at 84%. What about results from other groups? Uh, this is the paper from uh, uh, Dr. Bavaria from Philadelphia. And as, you can, as I showed earlier, um, for the bicuspid aortic valve, 100% of his patients require valve repair. Again, he has excellent results, obviously. Uh, freedom from valve reoperation at six years of nearly 100%. And freedom from uh, a survival is also 100% up to uh, six years. So he has an excellent result with bicuspid aortic valve repair as he does with the tricuspid valve repair. But does everybody get results like that? Now, if you, do, if you look at other other publications. Um, this is a big series uh, from uh, the Cleveland Clinic, uh, 728 patients from 1985, 32 years ago, to 2011. Very young patient, all by cuspid valve repair and a follow up 8.6 years. And I must say the, ex the operative mortality is extremely good, 0.41%, considering that they were including data from 1985. But the re freedom from reoperation, if you look at it, at about 10 years, so only 78%, so 22% um, had to have reoperation. And by 15, year, uh, by 15 years, a third of the patient had reoperation for failure of the valve repair. And if, if you then look at the causes of the failure, most of the failures are due to cusp prolapse from either technical errors or natural progression of the disease, which no one can do anything about. And this is very important, a very interesting slide uh, picture. Um, by six months, is, he said, they said 40% had no AR. That means 60% had a degree of AR at six months after surgery. And by five years, 25% had two plus AR, and 24% had three or four plus aortic regurgitation. And although the freedom from reoperation is only 80, 87%, with 50, nearly 50% 50 of them have greater than two, a, two plus AR, it means that there are potentially 36% of this entire group of patients that has got greater than two plus AR that has been treated medically and maybe coming for reoperation a bit later on. So it's not all easy and good. And similarly, if you look at the data from El Curi, uh, from the Brussels group, depending on the size of the annulus and whether you do uh, an, uh, um, an subcommissional annual plastic, again, if you look at it, there's quite a lot of patients who have recurrent uh, aortic regurgitation at three plus after only less than five years. There, that's the data. Follow up about 53 years mean, median for 53 years. And if you Ventricular aortic junction is less than 30 millimeter. The freedom of recur uh, recurrent AR is only 81%. That's been 20% as progression of aortic regurgitation after less than five years. And anybody with a bigger diameter, 60%. So this, the 40% of his patient had progression of uh, regurgitation. This is the paper from uh, from the Mayo Clinic, again looking at bicuspid aortic valve. The survival after the operation is similar to um, uh, the normal population, but at 10 years of follow-up, again, the freedom from reoperation is only around about 50%. So by 10 years, half the patient require repeat surgery. So is there a learning curve to all of this? And the answer is probably yes. And if you look at the data that was uh, presented from the Mayo Clinic and looking at the experience of the patient that's operated before year 2000 and the year after 2000, you see that there's a, almost a significant difference in the reoperation rate. And this might be attributed to, uh, to the learning curve. It might be because of better, better patient selection, better understanding, and also perhaps better techniques. In this, in this paper, they look at, they're plotting the um, 
the number of operations done per center versus the, the um, freedom from reoperation. And you can see that there's no real linear correlation. But they say that if you were to take the sample size and stop at 60, you might just find about a near enough a correlation between volume and outcome. And if you look at the paper from Al Khuri, um, who, is, uh, who is an expert in valve, aortic valve repair, um, between 1996 and 2004, he has got 0% mortality uh, with a mean follow-up, a mean age of 43, very young age group of patients. And if you look at his, state, his paper in, uh, uh, in detail, you find that although he has no mortality, the mor that morbidity there is significant. Three of his patients require redo surgery at day seven, eight, and 11 day post-op. Now, if you were to have that in the UK, I think we'll be getting a letter from the medical director very soon about a warning. Two of the patients fail, uh, need re require redo surgery at month 23 and 98 months. So basically, about 7.3% of the patients require redo operation with a, with a mean follow-up of, of less than five years. And if you look at the, the, uh, the data on ECHO data, he's, they say that 58, 58 patients, that means 85%, show no progression of aortic regurgitation by six years, uh, by five years, okay? That means, in, by inference, 15% of the patient has already shown progressive aortic regurgitation by five years. So how do we actually learn? How common is this operation? I mean, if you go to meetings like this, or aortic meeting, or look up the literature, you would think that the whole world is doing valve sparing operation, with bicuspid, even with bicuspid aortic valve. The best place to find out this, uh, uh, the, what, what it's like generally is look at databases. That is the best source of information. Now, this is the, the report from the uh, society, uh, STS database on aortic surgery, aortic root surgery. Within 2004 to 2010, ten, six years, they've done 13,000 operations uh, of root replacement, uh, mean age, median age of 58, but only 14% of those patients had a valve sparing operation. And if you then sub-break it down to tricuspid or bicuspid, it will be, so bicuspid will be even less. So a small number, a very small number actually had a valve sparing operation. What is more interesting thing is that if you look at this, the, uh, the centers, these are the number of centers, about 82 centers, 92 or 82, 82 centers, and if you plot the annual volume of aortic root surgery, aortic root surgery, only two centers does more than 100 aortic root operation per year. And the vast majority of them are doing very, very little. And if you look at the numbers, the median number of AOT root operation per center is only two cases per year. And only 5% of the site perform more than 16 cases annually. And the mortality is actually quite high, not the less than 1% mortality that you see published in the papers. Obviously, people who've got not such good results are not going to pub publish their papers in the journals. So this is a very good source of, uh, of data to see what it's actually like in the real world. So the mortality is quite high. But the valve sparing, for some reason, has a very low mortality, but probably because they are done by uh, people with vast amount of experience. And is it getting more popular, uh, valve sparing operation? It's not really. It's, st it's still just under 20% of the operations are valve sparing. Mortality, as we have seen, is quite high. Now, what about across the Atlantic in the UK? This is, again, this data, uh, the blue book, the UK data, from about the same period, 2004-2008. Only 2.3% of the patients have valve sparing operation. That means an only 133 valve sparing operations done in the whole UK over a four-year period between 2004 and 2008. And if you, if you look at it, there's only 33 cases per year, and we have about 30 centers in the UK, so that equates to about one case per center per year and less than one case done in the UK per week, okay? So it's very small. So although this is a historical data, if you multiply it by 10 times, it's still very small numbers. So do we all have to force ourselves to do a valve sparing operation? What about the comparison between valve repair and, uh, and the bental replacement? You can see that the, um, the group from uh, Joe Bavaria presented this paper in 2015, very recent. 
They found that there is no difference between valve repair and the bent out operation with mechanical or tissue valve. Freedom for mortality is the same. Reoperation is the same. And freedom from uh, AOT regurgitation is the same. There's no difference. And post-operative data, echo data remains about the same. The only difference is that in the bental group, you have more thromboembolic events. But what about comparing them? And so the conclusion from them is that patients with bicuspid AOT valve root aneurysm, primary cusp repair root implantation, achieve equivalent results compared to a bental root operation. There's no real advantage. And what about comparing valve, bicuspid valve repair with bioprosthetic valve? Again, this is the uh, paper from um, the Mayo Clinic. There's no difference in the survival between the two groups, and there's no difference in the uh, reoperation rate between the two groups. So in conclusion, bicuspid AOT valve repair and root preservation is a difficult and it's a very complex operation. And in experienced hands, in some centers, you can have excellent results. It's a good operation with an excellent medium and long-term outcome. But there is a learning curve here, and it's quite a steep learning curve. And what about a you know, good alternative, maybe a biological root replacement in the first instance that will last you about 10, 15, 15 years. And when that fails, you give them a TAVI, that will maybe give you another 15 years. That will give you 30 years um, uh, from this, for this operation. So that will compare very favorably, even with the best valve sparing root operation in the bicuspid AOT valve. Thank you. In the, in the interest of time,